Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today it is an epic day as we have nothing but good news. Wins for VR coming from every angle and I cannot wait to share it with you such as the Quest 2 Power Boost with real examples, price drops, the Quest 3 features with new videos of mixed reality content. Can Horizon Worlds be saved with its new feature and so much more. So I'm just going to stop talking now. That is enough chin wagging. Let's get started. Wait, but first a mention of a free awesome giveaway for saints and sinners. And today we do have a sponsor, but it's a legendary one and there are some chances for you to win some goodies. This is a legendary VR franchise, arguably one of the best. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, one of the few VR games that I feel is very well-rounded and is a miracle to be running on Quest due to its scale and deep narrative. This game is offering so many hours of play and if you've not played it yet, what are you doing? This series will be on sale at different times throughout the month, depending on what platform you are on, but Meta and Steam platforms should be available from today and PlayStation VR coming very soon. I'll leave links down below in the description so you can monitor the sales and perhaps purchase the title. And to celebrate, there is also a giveaway, thank you Skydance, for a chance for you guys to win a limited edition Walking Dead VR cover insert for your Quest headset. There are 500 of these up for grabs and I'll leave the link down below in the description. This will be running from the 1st of June until the 14th. Good luck, tourist. Starting with the Quest 2 power boost and its price drop, what does this mean for the next generation of VR? I'll touch on that later after I've spoken about the Quest 3. So Meta announced the Quest 2 will be getting a price drop and a power boost and a hefty one back to its original price point of £300 before its inflationary rise to £400 for the 120GB model. Or was this just a way for them to actually be like, it's on sale now! I know we bummed it up really recently, but now it's on sale back to its original RRP. But I think £300 for that headset is still such a bargain, especially when there's around five months until we see the Quest 3, and that's going to be £500. The 128GB model is £300 for the Quest 2 and £350 for the 256GB model. They are also releasing a software update for this headset that will affect the XR2 Gen 1 chipsets, so the Quest 2 and the Pro. We should see a potential improvement of up to 26% CPU performance and 19% GPU performance on the Quest 2 and 11% on the Quest Pro. That is a hefty chunk, although we were aware that they deliberately limited the power for heat issues due to the hardware architecture. So that may be where the 8% difference comes between the Pro and the Quest 2 because the Pro was adjusted to cater for that heat dissipation. But that performance boost should definitely help when recording games whilst playing VR. That overhead will make such a lovely difference, but I don't think it's going to make such a difference that we're going to start seeing games like No Man's Sky coming to Quest 2, which would be awesome. They're also enabling dynamic resolution scaling, which should deliver a smoother experience and stop frames being dropped by dynamically scaling the resolution. So when things are hard to render and the frames start dropping, it will just drop the resolution so the frames can still be as reliable and consistent as they previously were. So that is amazing news for current headsets, especially if you don't want to go and upgrade. You enjoy the Quest 2, it's delivering great experiences for you already, or you're using it as a hybrid headset, but the Quest 3 is going to have some pretty sweet upgrades. And since we're already on the topic of it, the Quest 3 will have a launch title for the biggest Quest title yet, Asgard's Wrath 2, which you can actually pre-order now and get the first game for free, although to play that, you will need a gaming PC to enjoy it. So Asgard's Wrath 2 is going to be $60, which is around £45, making it one of the most expensive titles yet. But it looks like you'll be able to enjoy over 60 hours of gameplay. That is $1 an hour, a great deal. But did anyone notice during the trailer of the showcase, it was nothing but combat. There was more combat than a Gen Z Mufti day. The price will be over $500 for the headset. We don't have the conversion rate yet, so I'm guessing around £500 just based on historic figures. And that's for the 128GB model. Larger models like 256GB will also be made available, but we don't have details on what those models and what those storage sizes are going to be just yet. 
The Quest 3 will also have the highest resolution display by far for the Quest and Meta's own pancake lenses. And that combo alone makes such a huge difference to the clarity and immersion in VR. I'm so pumped. It will also include a next generation Snapdragon chipset, which based on previous information should be the XR2 Gen 2 running a Snapdragon 8, but we're still waiting for an official report on what that chipset is actually going to be but they have said it should be around twice the graphical power of the Quest 2, so hopefully no more N64 titles, please. The headset is also going to have an improved mixed reality feature, not like the Quest Pro where it overlays color onto the black and white feed, it's gonna have full high resolution color pass through using two four megapixel RGB cameras, a depth sensor, so hopefully there's automatic room set up this time, I just, I hope. And hopefully it's not looking through clothes and seeing people's PPs like the previous one did that they took out of the Pro. This is all being ran by the AI Presence platform as well, which they announced when the Pro dropped, and it's going to have 10 times the pixel density the Quest 2 had. The Quest Pro had four times the Quest 2, and I just thought this pass-through is not good enough. It's so janky, you can't read anything in it. So 10 times, I'm pretty excited to see what that's going to look like. The headset is also going to be 40% thinner, but I did read somewhere that it's not any lighter. But being close to the face will improve comfort and prevent gravity trying to pull your head into hell. It also has new controllers, which initially they looked like the Quest Pro controllers, but white, but they are not. They are different to the Quest Pro controllers. They don't have additional cameras inside of the controller for full 360 tracking, but the Pro controllers will be supported by the Quest 3, so you can still purchase them, or if you've already purchased them, use them with the new headset. These default controllers will include true touch technology though, so great, great haptic feedback, a brilliant improvement, but they have removed the light ring, which someone raised a great point which had me worried about a Inclusion. When it comes to tracking the controllers, much like hand tracking, when it's outside of the view now, because it's much easier to cover the lights being tracked without having that ring there, how's that going to perform? So the new controllers that we have still have uh, infrared LEDs on them in a constellation that you can't see because you can't see infrared light, but the, the, the cameras that we have on the headset can see. However, they also are gonna be in positions where many of those LEDs are occluded. And so we have fused the computer version we were using for uh, constellation tracking with our hand models. Uh, so the hand tracking is also gonna kind of running at the same time. And so we have a model of your hand that tells us where the controller is in conjunction with all the tech tricks we've been using for a long time, using IMUs and smoothing to fill in gaps. Anyway, enough talking about Meta now for a second. Let's talk about some real grinders in the community and that's big screens headset, the Beyond. This headset has already had some huge improvements before its shipping date, and this one is a lens improvement that will allow for a wider field of view. And if you don't know, this device is one of the smallest headsets around. It was designed to allow for comfortable long VR sessions that often occur when you're having a VR social moment. One of the drawbacks of this device was its field of view, because it was limited to lower than its competitors, which are offering a headset at a much lower price point. This was sitting at 93 degrees, but that's now been improved by 10% to 100 and two degrees so it's on par now with other devices the pixel density has also been increased from 28 ppd to 32 ppd that's near the aero this is going to be such a clear headset and for context the quest pro is 22 ppd what a huge difference these improvements also allow for a wider sweet spot and an increased ipd from 55 to 53 on the lower end and 72 to 74 on the higher end great work a huge improvement i will link information on this device down below in the description if you're interested you are looking around a thousand dollars but can you put a price on comfort obviously obviously you can worldwide shipping should start later on this year as well now a question for the ages, can Horizon Worlds be saved? If you had asked me a couple days ago, I probably would have laughed in your face. <laughs> But after seeing the new capabilities that allow you to import models and textures, not just using the native creation tools on the platform, there is a glimmer of potential now. So they have shown off something called Titanborn, which is a shooter created using this feature, and it has so much more detail and looks so much more exciting and engaging. They've also stated that they're going to be supporting TypeScript programming, which is based on JavaScript, but as the name suggests, it allows for typing, which makes life so much easier when you define your data class is, especially when the compiler's outputting something that doesn't match up. It's it's just so much nicer, personally. JavaScript devs don't come at me. And one thing that cracked me up in the report after Meta have sunk so much money into this project is there was an internal memo leak. 
And the eternal memo leak said Horizon Worlds has not found product market fit. <laughs> like, it doesn't belong anywhere. Maybe when we get legs, we can talk about fitting in. <laughs> legs. Oh, so that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for supporting Steve, supporting VR, you legends. I hope you have a great week. Play some VR, get out into the sun a little bit, and hopefully I will see you next time. Happy gaming, guys. Good day!